Six racetracks F1 nearly went to, but didn't. We've all got so used to seeing calendar changes in this day and age due to the unfortunate global situation that we're in, but this has not always been the case, and usually when an F1 race is scheduled, it goes ahead. Moving dates around and replacing circuits altogether is a complete logistical nightmare, so F1 tries to avoid it at all costs. With a provisional calendar now published for the 2022 F1 season, we can't help but notice one venue that is absent once again. Before the global pandemic changed all our lives, F1 was scheduled to host a race in Hanoi. The Vietnamese Grand Prix had a date of April 2020, but well, we all know what happened next. With the circuit not featuring on F1's 2022 calendar either, it looks pretty likely we're never going to be heading to Hanoi. However, this isn't the first time a race that was scheduled has mysteriously disappeared. Here are some more racetracks that were signed, sealed, but not delivered. I'm also going to be rating each circuit on my level of disappointment that F1 didn't race there. Zero means I'm absolutely not bothered in the slightest, ten means I lose sleep at night. Zhuhai International Circuit The first Chinese Grand Prix took place at the Shanghai International Circuit in 2004, but F1 would have headed to China much earlier if all had gone to plan. The Zhuhai International Circuit opened in 1996 and was supposed to mark the second round of the 1999 F1 season. However, just a few months before the race, the FIA announced that the race had been postponed due to organisational problems. There were several plans to move it later that year and the following season, but nothing ever happened. Looking at the track map, seems like a reasonable circuit, but probably nothing to write home about. 4 out of 10. Ontario Motor Speedway during the 1960s and 70s, Watkins Glen was F1's permanent stateside fixture, and in 1972 there was a desire to add another race on the West Coast. Ontario Motor Speedway, located in Southern California, not Canada, was going to be that place. It was a state-of-the-art, for the time, copy of Indianapolis with an infield road course section. The circuit held a non-championship event for F1 and F5000 cars in 1971 called the Questor GP. Although the event proved popular, unfortunately the money ran out and the plan for it to host a race of the World Championship was never realised. Circuit looks pretty fun to me, didn't know it was even a thing until making this video, 6 out of 10, may think about it sometimes from here on in. Port Imperial Street Circuit A more recent attempt to add another race in the USA came in the early 2010s when Bernie Eccleston was desperate for a New York street circuit. Although the planned layout was actually in New Jersey, the Manhattan skyline would have made for an impressive backdrop for a circuit near the Hudson River. First dreamed up in 2011, the Grand Prix of America was set to appear on the 2013 calendar, but constant dithering on the part of both the organisers and the FIA meant that the race had to be cancelled. Sebastian Vettel said it reminded him of Spa when he drove it. That's a solid 8 out of 10 for me. Might wake up occasionally and think, what if? Rome Street Circuit In the mid-1980s, plans to bring F1 to the streets of Rome were gathering momentum. When the 1985 Dallas Grand Prix ended up being cancelled, Rome ended up taking its place on the calendar under the guise of the European Grand Prix. Scheduled to take place in October as a one-off event, the circuit was going to be located on the outskirts of the city in and around the Palazzo della Sport in the EUR area. Although the FIA approved the layout, there was some opposition to the race, and the race ended up being hosted at Brands Hatch instead. It was probably no great loss either, with a predicted average lap speed of 93 miles per hour, the Rome circuit would have been about the same speed as Monaco. Funnily enough, these days, the Rome E Prix is held in pretty much the same location for Formula E. This one has got to be a 2 out of 10, it looks like a mounted machine gun. If it's resembling Monaco and speeds not even averaging over 100 miles per hour, I will probably forget this circuit by the time I've finished voiceovering this video. Autopolis Built in the late 1980s to a budget of $500 million and billed as a racing resort, Autopolis's wealthy and eccentric owner, Tomonori Suramaki, probably butchered that, decided that he wanted his racetrack to host a Grand Prix. He even went so far as to sponsor the Benetton team in the early 1990s as a form of promotion, with the Autopolis logo appearing prominently on the cars. After hosting the last round of the 1991 World Sports Car Championship, an event won by Michael Schumacher, love you Shumi, Autopolis was included on the provisional 1993 calendar. Unfortunately, at around the same time, Suramaki filed for bankruptcy and couldn't afford to host the race, at which point it was replaced on the calendar by Donington Park. The track was also incredibly remote, and the logistics of hosting a series as massive as F1 would have been an absolute nightmare. To be fair, the track looks reasonable, and if Shumi won around it, it can never be forgotten in my eyes. It's a 5 out of 10 from me. 
As well as those listed above, there was also a failed attempt to get a street circuit at the beach town of Fuengirola, probably butchered that as well, on the Costa del Sol in 1984, and another US race around the New York metropolitan area for the 1983 season. There you have it, some F1 races that we almost had, but they didn't come to fruition. Which track are you most upset that we didn't get to see? Are there any we missed out on this list? Let us know in the comment section below.